to see and I'll make sure okay microphone is on hey everybody what's going on it's me ronald bringing in another episode for you guys of course you know uh, it has been a crazy weekend the last past few days has been very much great and i wouldn't change it for the red light so yay but yesterday wait wait not yet yeah yeah it's bad uh the last, like i said the last past few days has, has been a up and down whirlwind messed around and got sick over the weekend because your boy put it upon himself to change his brakes during the freezing cold i had on of course my um my snow gear stuff so i had on my hat my gloves my snow suit that i got for christmas and whatnot but i was still in the cold still freezing but i got my brakes done partly i got part of my brakes done i should take that back i got part of my brakes done so my rear brakes are done I just have to find some time to get my front brakes taken care of. Once that is done, I'm good. I'm golden. I will know how to do brakes and rotors. I will change. I will learn how to change my own brakes and rotors at a fraction of the price of going to the mechanic shop. So kudos, which also, again, it coincides with my New Year's resolution that I did or said that i wanted to be more mechanically involved with my car meaning the little small repairs that i can do i'm going to do them and so that's what i've done so i got my brakes and rotors done to my back side of my car done and taken care of i just got to find a day to do the front part and especially when it's not brutally cold outside so hopefully sometime this week we can get that done and yeah, that'll be it. So other than that, of course, you guys have known that or you know that at the school that I work at, I've been a new aide and an emotional support buddy. And so for those of you guys who don't know what that is, first part of my job as a new aide, basically what I do is I come in, help set up for, for lunch, and then I go outside, monitor the kids, make sure the kids are good and taken care of, make sure they don't get into super trouble. And if they do get into some super trouble, then of course I will call in some specialists to come and deal with them. We call them behavior interventionists. And so they come in and check with the kids on a one-on-one -on -one basis, figure out what's going on, get to the root bottom of it and go from there so i've also had an experience of doing that as well so once the kids are coming inside from recess then what i do is at the last recess of the day i come inside help up help out with um setting up well help out with help out the kids opening up certain packages like their milks or they have like package fruits and vegetables, help them open up with that. They need to run to the bathroom, make sure they get a pass to go to the bathroom. If they have any like jobs they want to do, like sweeping, pushing around the trash can amongst their peers, make sure they get that done and taken care of. And it pretty much is get involved in their lives and make, and make them more aware of the responsibilities that they have. And so once lunch is, once the last lunch is done, then pretty much break the, clean off all the tables, sweep, mop, do what we got to do so when it's time for um gym class to start for for most of the grades they have a clean gym to come around in and get that done well the last few days ooh, the last few days had to put that on the pause because i, I think the homie just showed up and i'm trying to see if we need some more time do i want to do we want to bring a man let's bring the man in here we go. Black is king. Let's give it up. 
for our man Tony. Woo, woo, woo. So, yeah, I was debating whether I wanted to jump on because I had to. Um, I was sitting in the darkness, <laughs> um, huh. in the black, and I was like, let me actually turn on some lights and close my windows. There you go. But I wanted to at least jump on so that way you weren't. I didn't know if it was everyone or just me. Oh, no, we're good. You are good, sir. Hey, Brock, what's happening? What's happening? You right on time. Good to see you. Good to see you. Pretty much, I'm giving a recap of my weekend. And I know once I'm done with my recap, Toby, he's going to do his recap. And then when I was just about to speak this person's name, as soon as the tip of her name was on my tongue, guess who shows up? The lovely, the illustrious, the wonderful, the one and only. Hey, ooh, 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 hey ooh, everybody. Ooh. What's up? Yeah, well, that's that was a great um, entrance or, that, you know, or like introduction <laughs> rather. Thank you. Illustrious. Listen, no, literally, your name was on the tip of my tongue. And when you jumped in, I'm like, oh, here she is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And so I was basically, you know, doing the introductions and not introductions. I was basically um, giving a kind of brief, in-depth snapshot of my weekend. Yes, the Trinity is here. Woo! <laughs> yes. I was giving a brief introduction. Oh, you guys, since, since you guys are here, I got some, like, I want to say some good news, but okay. it is kind of um, weird. So the last past few days, I've been a substitute. So Thursday and Friday in the PM, I was a substitute for the third grader. And then today and yesterday, I was an actual full-fledged substitute for the whole day. Okay. Mm. Oh, it was awesome. I love it. Nice, nice. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. it. And then just just seeing the kids like light up. And even then Friday, um over the weekend, they asked, like, you know, hey Mr. Marzette, are you gonna be, you know, are you gonna be coming back for on Monday? I was like, I don't know. It depends on what the principal says. Maybe, right. maybe not. And so when they saw me Monday, they're like, crap, you're here. Like, yes, I'm here. Like, who had a great weekend? So we kind of just debriefed, you know, went over the weekend, how everybody's weekend was. And then, again, yesterday, we were leaving. And I was like, you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow. They're like, are you going to be here tomorrow, too? I was like, yeah. You know, again, if the principal says I should be back tomorrow, I'll be back first thing in the morning. And though, sure enough, today I was there first thing in the morning, and one of the kids that I kind of, you know, had to get on their case about gave me like the biggest hug. Like out of all the kids that was there, he was the only one that gave me the biggest hug. I'm like, mm. oh, like I got on your case that bad, but yet you still gave me love. Like, mm. you know what? That's what's up. I, I like that. Like, yes, I can dig that. So, um. Today kind of today was a today it started off good, kind of was like okay, then it kind of went okay to a good happy point plateaued. Then it said, Nope, going straight to crap. So I'm like, okay, I gotta tell you, teacher, because I know and I'm gonna let her know what's going on. And yes, I'm gonna leave her a note on the whiteboard. She can do with y'all what she wants to deal with y'all. And I'm gonna send her a message as well. So when she gets it, it's not like a sticker shot and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so some of the kids pulled me to the side. They're like, Well, we weren't all bad. Like, I know you guys weren't all bad. They're like, well, when you send in the note, can you at least let her know that I was good and a few of my friends were good? So we don't get as much trouble as everybody else. I'm like, you know what? Okay, I could do that. Because of the fact that you kind of spoke up for the whole group. Of, of kids who weren't acting up but you were actually trying to learn i got you mm -hmm. and so I, I did so in my before i left the building i sent her an email 
and just kind of told her, you know, what was going on, what happened, who's the kids that were exceptional because she told me in the email that the kids <laughs> who were exceptional, basically she didn't get them a gift. I don't know what, but I was like, you know, your teacher said that if you guys are doing well, she has something for you guys. And the people who weren't doing so well, she's going to have to talk to. Hmm. And for the last past few days, they're like, so did you turn in the list? I'm like, no, because first of all, yesterday, first of all, you know, the day ended, started good, ended okay. And then today they asked, like, do you have a list ready? I'm like, no. Like, so who's on the good list? Like, as of right now, nobody. Who's on the bad list? As of right now, nobody, but that could all change by the end of the day. And so they're all just kind of like, okay, we don't want to be on the bad list. Whatever we do, don't be on the bad list. Let's be on the good list. And of course, um, we have some, we have like a, a few individuals. They're kind of like, you know, we're going to push the button and see what happens. We're going to push the button and see what happens. So I'm like, okay, I got y'all. So I took some time away from their their fun time called Prodigy, mm -hmm. and that's when they pretty much unwind and everything. I was like, no, I'm gonna take five minutes away, and so they're like, no, no, no. And then surprisingly, one of the guys who gave me trouble was like, you know what? Since we've been bad, why not just take the whole thing away? I'm like, whoa, like for real, <laughs> like. I'll, the the main person who I was telling her to sit down, don't do this, don't do that, you're suggesting to take the whole thing away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. Like, again, like, as we're leaving, <laughs> basically what you said, Barack, was basically what he said. He's like, listen, you know, we wanted to learn. They kept talking out of turn, being disruptive. Like, no, we were really interested in learning what you had to say. And we were, we really like you as a teacher, you know, it's like, not to say that you're not a bad teacher, like, but still it's like, we just like your style. It's like, you're, you're really all about fun and you like to have fun in what you're doing. I'm like, yeah, because I get it. School is boring. And especially if you have to uh -huh. wear a mask all day, school is definitely boring with the mask. So it's like, I get it. And then on top of that, not being able to go outside and play, Yes, it makes school that much more dreadful. I get it. But like, but we're gonna get it through together. And so again, the one kid who gave me lip, he was like, you know what? We don't deserve it. He was like, plain and simple, we don't deserve it. If we uh -huh. can't listen to you and follow your directions, we don't deserve it. And somebody else in the back is like, you know what? He's right, we don't. And somebody else is like, Yeah, we're sorry, but we don't deserve it. And they're like, Really? I'm like wow i i can't say anything bad about that i'm like at least you guys are learning are learning how to own up to your own faults i wish most adults could do that but you know i would take this small group of third graders i will run with it and and if we could take on the world with just this group okay let's do it i'm fine i am okay with it and so okay cool you know for the rest of the day nobody does anything we'll put the laptops away and we'll just sit in silence for like 10 minutes and even like the last five minutes that literally fell apart i'm like okay i'll do you one better i'll let your teacher deal with you you owe her 10 minutes and she can pick and choose when she wants to implement that and they're like for real mm -hmm. like i told y'all time, okay. time and time again and so yeah that's crazy. That's basically my weekend. Oh, and uh, I got my breaks done. Well, I got the half my breaks done in road exchange. So, okay. yeah, now I just got to find time to get my front set done, and I'll have completely changed brakes and rotors in my car. Nice. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. It did. My weekend. Uh, yes, um, your weekend. Oh. My weekend was pretty, uh, it was pretty busy. Like, um, it was supposed to be our, um, like my siblings, like sibling night. Cause mm -hmm. I don't know if I've mentioned this on 
on the channel before him. I have three older brothers and three older sisters. So we tried to, you know, get together at least once a year. And of course we kind of, I guess 2020 and 2021, we all kind of get together at it. So we're trying to for this over this weekend, but because of Omicron, we decided to like, you know, put that on pause. We might do it, you know, maybe February, March or something. Um, so over the weekend, I can't quite remember what I did Saturday. I don't think I did much. But Sunday, uh, my friend, like two of my friends came over and they put together um, this coffee table, not coffee table. It's like a wine rack, like a liquor cabinet, liquor bar sort of thing. And also like hung up my, my artwork. I mean, not mine, but like I didn't make it, but I bought it. <laughs> and um, and the, we put up some, some other stuff around the house too. Um, let's see if I could, like, yeah. So they, they put up some, some of like the artwork around, around the house which is nice. So I don't know, like you could probably see it on like past streams. Like I had like a brown, um, like, like sideboard that was here. And of course it doesn't look good with the red wall that I painted. So I fortunately found this on Wayfair and nice. yeah, thank you. No, I, I really like it. It's not too big, but uh, the one right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right yes. there. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Right there. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. So like it's oh, cute. Like it. Yeah. And you know holds. It's able to hold, you know, everything. Not mm -hmm. like I have a lot. I'm not like a as big of a drinker as I was in college, but I, you know, <laughs> I just needed something there that was white there you go so i'm still working on this wall trying to you know try to make it like exciting because it's you know a red wall <laughs> so, yeah, it'd be, like right now it just looks kind of like boring <laughs> but it's well, like it's getting there yeah it's a work in progress yes yeah it's a work in progress yeah and that's what you know being a homeowner is it's just a constant work in progress. There you go. And you go. everything is expensive, so it goes really slowly. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, especially because you got to pay for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, also, I also got a new rug. I don't know. Oh, it's probably looks crazy. Um, the one look... underneath the table. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm sure you guys haven't seen like what my rug looked like before, but. <laughs> It's a new rug and it's kind of exciting. My last rug, um, my mom got it for me like right when I moved into my place six years ago. Oh, and it was just, I just wasn't feeling it really like ever, but it was just, <laughs> I didn't, and I really, I was like, whatever, I'll just keep the rug cause it's here. So I guess it was, you know, it's, it, it's weird replacing things that are already there because you feel like you're, it almost feels like a waste of money in a way, but it's not because you really need to like upgrade and update your things. And, you know, it's also good to just see new things in your space from time to time, just to sort of like, it's almost like a, like a reset button almost mm -hmm. where, it, um, you know, you just like, yeah. So it is good to like kind of see new things, but that's not like why I did it. It was because, and I was doing it for myself. I've been really trying to um, focus on making my place feel like, you know, represent me the most. And so that's kind of like what I've been working on. I do have this really cool um, art piece. Let's see if I could, if you could see it right here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I bought it because it, it looked really nice. And I was thinking I'm putting it somewhere else, but I was like, you know, I don't think it's going to look too good in, in my second bedroom. So I was happy that, you know, I was able to fit on that wall and it looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. It's nice. I like it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that, that was my weekend just trying to 
I don't know, level up adult wise. <laughs> there, there you go. I like that. There we go. And and I, con I concur as well. It looked nice. Thank you. And now I don't look like a like a serial killer anymore because I have I have art on my walls. <laughs> Did we have a discussion about that when we were um? Yes. Visit. I think so. Yeah, because. You know, it just sucks because it's like, yeah, I know how to hang something, but I don't like because my friend, you know, he's like a handy handy worker, so like he would know how to, you know, put the nail in and like measure everything and make sure that it looks good, and so and I also like nail it in the correct way just to kind of like have it up. I wouldn't know how to do that. I would have just been like. All right, let me just put the nail in here, I guess, and just hang it up like this. Why not? And it might be too low, it might be too high, but you know. So he was able to, you know, hang it up to, to make it look nice. So, yeah. Good. So I'm happy. I'm, I'm, and also, like, I have like a piece of art above my bed. Let me hold on. Let me see if I could show you. I don't know what my what the state of my room looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. While she's doing at Toby. Perfect. Yeah. To um, I don't know. It felt like a pretty like I didn't get a lot of rest, but I didn't really do a lot. Like I wasn't like necessarily out here. Like I think Saturday I had stayed home. I felt actually Saturday, I think, because I think what it was was I was hanging out with a few different friends. So mm -hmm. Um, cause I had just come back from Maryland, right? I was there for like two weeks. Um, and because we had COVID exposure in the house, I basically was not able to really go anywhere. So didn't hang out with any of my friends from like high school or college. Like that's usually what happens when I go home. I of course have family time, but then usually I also go like Thanksgiving. I was home for two weeks, hung out with high school friends, um, which was really cool. Hung out with even some friends I knew from grad school who had lived in Maryland or were visiting. And then I was able to hang out, didn't hang out with any college friends, kind of funny enough. That was what I was going to do in the winter. So long story short, didn't get to do that. So when I came back to Massachusetts um, last week, literally, actually, it was last week, Tuesday evening, um, I was kind of just first, just like, you know, I had I, I had some friends I saw, but there was like some overdue, I think, catching up I needed to do. Um, some new friends, because one of my resolutions is I need to stop meeting new people. Like some people say, I need to meet new people, make new friends, be more open. Now I need to stop meeting new people. That's like my 2022 years, New Year's resolution, is to hang out with the people who I already know, try to invest more. This is what I said for 2021. Um, I didn't pretend that I was going to not meet new people. What I said in 2021 was, I'm going to invest in the people who invest in me, people who I clearly have more of a rapport with, and try to actually build those friendships and relationships up. Um, with mixed results. <laughs> um, so this year, I'm like, let me actually go back and invest in the people that, you know, I care about and invest in me. And so I was able to hang out with one friend, which was nice. Um, we had the meaning to hang out for the longest, but we always miss each other. So finally, we just kind of chilled. Um, had a really good conversation. I got to drink some wine. So I've been trying to buy more wine, actually. I think that's what I'm going to be. I don't know. Beer, eh. I feel like I'm kind of not liking beer as much as I used to some years ago, mm -hmm. depending on the beer. Some beer I still really like, but some I'm just like, I don't, I can't just drink this for the sake of drinking beer. Um, So I was able to get some Pinot Noir, Noir, Noir whatever. Okay. Okay. Red, nice dark red. Um, That was cool. And then I think... Sun Saturday, I was supposed to take some errands. I didn't, unfortunately. Um, stuff with my car. I think what I ended up doing was I ended up going grocery shopping. I didn't get a lot of stuff, but I felt like I got good quality items um, that I haven't quite used all of. Like I got some Hagen Dazs ice cream because Calista Cotti, who may or may not be in the background, she recommended to me. Okay. You have. Hagen Dazs vanilla ice cream with, um, I think it was eggnog. And so mm -hmm. I was like, cool. Ooh. I came back and I decided to buy the Hagen Dazs. They have like vanilla, chocolate chip, vanilla, um, 
some kind of nut that I can't remember. Um, almond. It was vanilla almond. But I didn't see any eggnog. I'm hoping they don't have it like gone for good. But I think they just didn't have it at least now. If it's gone for good, then screw me. I guess I'm gonna wait ten months before I can get more eggnog. Um, yeah, it might be gone for good actually. Because I'm yeah. like it's still winter. What are y'all doing? Like <laughs> it's not Christmas anymore. <laughs> I mean, listen, we're closer to Christmas than than not. So that's my logic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I don't think logic's it. gonna work. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait, I guess. But or I can check other places. I only checked there. So I just did some like some stuff um like that. I think I bought some other food that a friend of mine cooked, and so I had some pretty good food. My friend's Dominican, so they made plantain. Um and what is it? What do you call that thing? Salami. It was like salami that you could chop up and fry. So it was nice. Just, you know, again, another friend who I wanted to like hang out with more. And so I'm trying to be more intentional and not mm -hmm. get too swept up in like all the craziness. Like last year, it was there was a little bit of craziness. And so I'm like, let me be intentional with who I'm hanging out with and the time that I spend. Um, so that was cool. And I think Sunday I ended up going out to support a DJ who was homegrown. He's Nigerian, but he grew up, I think, in Mass. And I knew him three years ago before I really met a lot of the people where I live now. Um, when I went out for my birthday, he happened to be the promoter. So I've like not known him well, but we've been friends on Facebook, whatever. I've gone out to some of his events. But now I've like it's kind of come full circle because he's doing a tour um, mm, nationwide, great. his first solo tour um, without like promoters or anyone else. So I was like, yo, you're coming here. I've got to come support. So that was Sunday. Um, but besides that, like I kind of just was like home, just not doing a whole lot. Um, mm. <clears throat> just catching up on my own self um, and, you know, trying to recoup, I guess, a little bit because I feel like it was just a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. It was a lot going on. And I, when I came home, home, when I came to Massachusetts, I was like, let me redirect the energy, take care of the stuff that's important to me and just keep doing that yes. as much as I can. So anyway. Okay. No, you're good. You're good. And L, by the way, the pictures in your bedroom. Yes. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank Not you. Awesome. I wanted to say that before we go any further. I like the pictures. I like the pictures in, in your bedroom. Did you? And it looked like you had one, like, was like a cup, like two cups or two vases. Yeah, it was two mugs. That was actually the kitchen. Um, but yeah, the, the one in my bedroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for liking my picture. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I saw because I saw the one above the head. I'm like, okay, that was nice. And then I saw the other one, like, oh, that's even I'm like, I like that one too. I'm like, I like, I like the color. I like the color schemes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh man. Talking about pictures and and whatnots and everybody's weekend sounded awesome. Just just throwing that out there. Everybody had a good productive weekend and chat. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't forget about you guys. How was your guys' this weekend? What did you guys do over the weekend? Was it productive? Did you chill? Did you just, you know, kick back and relax? Got some some you time, yeah. aka you time. You know, type what you guys did in the chat. And we will read the comments and whatnot. So as, as we're moving along. Uh, we had a little bit of homework mm -hmm. last week. Did anybody get a chance to watch the movie? Can yeah. I, I watched the documentary last night. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It yeah. Was. It was a, like it definitely was like an interesting dive into to MLK. I feel mm -hmm. like MLK is this is gonna be a weird ass analogy, but just bear with me. I feel like MLK is like you know, like that movie that you see like a lot of memes about and you see clips about for like years, 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 and 
you actually realize you've never watched the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like you think you know what it's about. And then you actually but you actually never watched the movie. That was my case for the Matrix, the original Matrix. Mm. I, actually wa I actually watched it for the first time like on like the 30th like of December. Hey. Someone hey. else has told me that. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Cause so I know that that's, this is like a super weird analogy, but you know, you feel like MLK because like you've you know, heard his name all throughout life and you know, like in schools, you probably did like a little bit of like history about him and stuff like that. So you felt like you knew him, you knew, you know, like you get the day off because of him, like you, you knew he was an important figure, but then you just don't really realize that it's like, yeah, you don't know shit actually. You know? Hey. Hey. 100%. Um, I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, not, not with Mark's. I haven't seen the new Matrix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to your thoughts in general. Though. Yeah, yeah. Mark told me not to watch that either. I'm like, part of me is like debating because I do, I do enjoy Keanu Reeves, but I, I probably won't because if it took me this long to watch the first Matrix, then yes. who the hell knows? I'm gonna watch the next one. <laughs> so... Oh man! Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. I, I suck at movies. Like. I feel like this is a quick, quick tangent. I feel like everybody has like that one, like media genre that they really, really pay attention to, yeah. or, or more than one. Like, for some people, some people are like, like movie people. I think it's called like, cinephiles. Like mm -hmm. they, yeah. you know, seen every movie or or like from like the seventies, fifties, like movies from different countries. You know, like directors seeing how like each director plays off of another director and who inspires who and like they're just really really into that culture some people are like super into music in that in that sense and other people are like really really into television i feel like i'm more so like the television um person so like when it comes to movies like it, it's hard for me to really just sit down and watch a movie like the new spider-man came out i'm like i'll watch it when i watch it <laughs> i do like spider-man don't get me wrong mm -hmm. you know but I'm just not in any rush to go go to a movie right now. Anyway, so yeah, so you know, you feel like you know, you know, I'm okay, and and then you really just have no idea because of you know, you didn't, you you never really got like a deep dive into like. Like you knew the South was bad, especially with Jim Crow and segregation and and, and that. But it's like, I don't know if it's just because we're older and we're just understanding, or just the fact that we're seeing bullshit now, you know, today, mm -hmm. that you start to really, really, really get a full, a better understanding, and a and a better and like more appreciative of what he had to go through, what he had to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And just how scary and just how, like, you know, frightening it was. And I, I feel like I'm not doing the justice of, you know, just like, just, I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, describing the gravity of the, of the situation or, or the, the realness of the situation well enough, you know, with how I'm describing it. But, you know, like he was risking his life being peaceful. Mm -hmm. You know, he kept preaching, you know, you know, peaceful protests, peaceful, you know, peacefully doing things. But, you know, the people who just did not want blacks to have any sort of power were like so fucking, you know, just, you know, like they, they could like, like they could kill a black person like nothing would happen because black people just really just did not have any sort of rights like i mean between now between that and now it's like we have like three more rights but like you know back then it was literally just nothing and you know what mlk was preaching for he was he like he seemed to always be inclusive of everyone you know mm -hmm. especially poor people and it's like there was a there was a line in the in the movie in the, in the documentary rather um 
I forgot who it was, but it was someone who was working with MLK, and he was at it was like for the it was like the Poor People's Campaign or the Poor People Coalition, mm -hmm. um, where the, the the man who was being interviewed he was saying like yeah I was asking MLK it's like hey do you, are we gonna talk to you know poor whites mm -hmm. and King was like well are they poor I was like yeah I was like yes then we're gonna talk to them <laughs> like we need them. <laughs> Yeah. And like, so, you know, King was, you know, preaching that they were like, you know, trying to, you know, uh, he was, you know, he was vehemently against poverty, as we all know. Um, and, you know, he was, I just lost my train of thought. What, like, what else? Um, oh, like, like, even though like what he was preaching and everything was true and what he was fighting for, mm -hmm. you know, was, you know, was absolutely like true, especially for those times. And even times of today, you know, his approval rating, like he was, he was like one of the most hated men in the country mm. for simply just fighting, like for being peaceful, for peacefully protesting, gathering a group, gathering people, having like a massive support group for, you know, f fighting for peacefully for what is intrinsically right. Mm -hmm. And like the comedian Michael Che kind of put it inter like interestingly in, in um, I think like his 2016 special, Michael Che Matters, um, he said black, like gays are fighting for equal rights, which is, it's crazy that that's like a position you can be for equal rights. Like, Black people are fighting for civil rights. It's like, hey, let's just be civil. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, mean, I always thought that that was, you know, like pretty funny. But like, that, this is what like we we're just fighting for. It's just like, hey, can we at least be civil here? Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, it's a, a funny play on words. But it, it just sort of like, you know, like puts thing, things into perspective where it's just like, hey, can we just be civil? Hey, can we just vote? It's like, no. Hey, can we go to like this restaurant, this grocery store? I was like, no. <laughs> it was like, no. Like these are the laws, these are the rules. And you know, you're this is you know, like you're infringing on like, I don't know, like the cons like whatever BS that they were probably throwing at you, like they're doing now. I was like, this goes against the constitution, this goes against the Bible, this goes against like and it was just like these really weird beliefs that you know made people like so against you know, MLK just peacefully protesting and, you know, fighting mm -hmm. for what, what's right. Sorry if I'm going all over the place. I'm just you're like good. You're good. grabbing at random like, stuff that I remember from the, from the documentary. <laughs> but like what always gets to me is um, because we're going to, we're going to hear this in next week in six days for a kid's MLK day. A lot of like Republican, um, especially Republican, um, legislatures, uh, politicians, and, and things of that nature are going to pull MLK. They're going to act like they were, you know, supporting him, supportive of him. Some of them were very much alive when he was, you know, you know, you know, doing like marching, you know, like Selma, March on Washington and everything. Mm -hmm. Um that I am a man march. I can't remember what that was called. Um, some of them were very much well alive. Their parents were definitely alive because we have some old ass people in, in government. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're going to be saying all these sorts of things. And I'm like, you know, damn well that he, they wouldn't have supported him if he were, if he were alive or, you know, if he lived for 30 more years, you know, let's say. Say it's shocking how little people know about it. It's actually now. It's true. Yeah. Covered it one month out of the year, and like barely because they also have to fit in like the other safe black people. John McCain voted against MLK Day. He was even in. Oh, I guess these people really are old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John McCain was even in the Senate at that time. For sure. Um, yeah. Funny enough, I was actually just having this conversation today with my therapist. Um, that MLK Day was recognized just in 1986. 
and we weren't getting it off as a school day until like 2000. But we had two President's Day. We had Washington Day and Lincoln Day. Um, and that was like two weeks in a row, apparently. So it was like, yeah, two four-day weeks in a row sometime in February. But I guess they combined the two to make President's Day. And then I guess they just made MLK Day. I don't know why they didn't just keep all the days, but whatever. <laughs> there's too much money and productivity. I know. Something. Yeah, there's too because we're just like so productive of a people. Can't let those lazy frugal <laughs> workers get those days off. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we can't just be talking about, you know, around the water cooler about sports. You know, like we have, we have to get back into the office to talk about this. This is hella pertinent. And then, you know, move our mouse every 20 minutes to make sure that our, that our screens are on. Anyway. <laughs> Right. Right. Come on. Yeah. Save yeah. some money for once. Jeez. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm sure like they voted against it because of I mean they probably still held like beliefs of you know you know, MLK like I'm sure like John McCain's dad or maybe John McCain himself wasn't supportive of MLK for whatever fucking reason because of whatever news outlets he was learning about MLK at the time. Um, I remember in the documentary, some people, some people's parents were saying like, oh yeah, I remember my mom saying when he died, it's like, oh, he deserved it. He was a, I don't know the word he was like vagrant or like, oh no, like rabble rouser. I think that was the word, which is like, oh, gosh. really a rabble rouser deserves to be freaking assassinated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a, um, but it's true. Like, it's not as if these people are so long ago. You know, MLK was assassinated. Was it April fourth, nineteen sixty eight? Um, mm. you know, I was just thinking, like, my own mother. You know, was like, you know, like probably like in our early teens at that point mm -hmm. my own mom you know mm -hmm. i was even just thinking i just remembered like um i think emmett till's funeral was like a month before my mom was born oh wow yeah and you know like this isn't like my grandma or <laughs> my great grandma or something this is my mom <laughs> yeah. you know like the same lady I'd complain about living with me, mom, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, like, like, there's like some stuff at the front door that I need to give to her, my mom, you know, like, and she was, you know, born, like she was alive and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, it, it like, and, you know, like we all know someone who was probably born in 68 you know, whether it's like a cousin or an, like an uncle or a parent or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that really just means that the, actually, because uh, he loves to bring this up like this, um, this black owned restaurant that I that I frequent, the owner, he always says that he was born like two weeks after Martin Luther King was assassinated. Wow. Okay. You know, like, and it's not like he's like some you know, like old man falling, like falling, like, no, he's like, what, like in his 50s, <laughs> which is nothing. It was like Kamala Harris is what, like 55, I think. Mm. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we start putting, we start putting that information out. Do you think of like, yeah, a lot of the people that we, we have elected in that office, they were alive when he was assassinated. So it's like, it's not something that they, could not remember it's like no they were there you know yeah, yeah you know like some of them were very much so probably like in college yeah you know like so i mean liz is saying that she was a kid in 68 it's like right yeah um oh mark is saying that i'm okay was a comedy yeah, yeah I, I don't know what's yeah. that fucking term that they just love to throw around like they're they're taught there was like somebody who was like ranting on twitter 
I don't know if she was like like in law or I mean like a like a politician or anything or I don't know, maybe just some random account. I don't know. But she was like saying like, oh, there shouldn't be any Chinese people in Texas, like in the Texas school system. I was like, the hell? Like you like how is this on your mind? You know? <laughs> Right. Like, we can't support the Chinese Communist Party. It's like these are commies. It's like how? Like what the hell? Right. Like, do we need to like take give you like a history lesson of, you know? I mean, of course, like these are totally these are two totally different countries. But like, like the Japanese the Japanese um, internment camps, you know, back in when was that? Like I guess the forties. That was World War Two. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, of course, there are two different countries. But I believe, I believe, Japan was un- were they under communism at that point? I think they were always just in parallelism. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if Japan was allied really with the communists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, it's it's not good either way because like you start grouping multiple people, like with coronavirus. You know, Asian Americans yeah. in general are going to hit the blunt, get like feel the brunt of everything. I know, which is ridiculous. Like people are really, ah, oh, jeez. It's like it's like people don't even realize that people go to different countries and then continue going to different countries. Like, because like most of COVID came from Italy, for the U.S. I believe, at least yeah. like from the beginning. Oh yeah, the EU was pretty big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True, very true. And then I like this one. I like this one. Ooh. Uh-huh. Interesting. That's cool. Nice. Have you ever been to Japan, Liz? Okay, Japan was not. <coughs> were they That's ever? Awesome. They were they were definitely something that I thought they were just uh, imperialists. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm a freak. Well, hold on. Uh, let's look it up. Okay. <laughs> they were... uh-huh. Because in World War Two, they were trying to be. I think they're they're on Germany's side. Yeah, and Germany was also not communist. They were just. I don't even know if they were imperialists. Uh-huh. They were just fascists, um, like Italy. Um, they were just like let's just dominate every country we can in our sphere. Like Japan had the whole thing with China, um, with Nanjing. As for, yeah, it's actually funny because that's why communists at first were not seen as so scary because the Soviet Union actually was a huge ally in World War II. <laughs> and then that fell apart very quickly. Mm-hmm. After it ended. But um, yeah, history is so interesting. Yeah, for sure. And it's really helpful when you know everything because when you just know the side of the winners, you know, it's you, you got to figure out like why they won and who were they against and why mm-hmm. were they against them. You know, like I feel like in American history, we try to make it seem so black and white when it's you know, there's a massive, very interesting gray area that we need to you know delve into. Yeah, like world history does not always get divided so cleanly into these lines, but sometimes it still happens. Like one guy, like when the crusade, we were talking about the crusades and they mentioned like the first crusade because of the surprise attack, the Christians won. But one guy in the class was like, we won. And the teacher was like, no, the Christians won or like the, whatever that, because that was like the middle ages. So whatever you want to call them, it wasn't really the empire, the British empire. It wasn't, um, it was just whatever, the, that, that society was the, the Catholics, whatever. But like, and it's funny because he's very atheist. So it's funny that he was like, "We won," and, but I'm like, I feel like that's just like the that gen, that general like you think of who the winners and who the the right side is, like the Western civilization, the Christians, the or the U.S. right democracy mm-hmm. versus the others, which usually are the Muslims. Um, obviously, of the communists, socialists, and a lot of like the perceived enemies, and then you will like identify with the correct side yeah exactly exactly and because like that's like the majority therefore it's like the correct and 
and, and things of that nature. Um, but, no, it's true. Our hist- like what um, Barack said, our history lessons are often very watered down. And it's, it's so sad because like I have yet to meet anyone. I don't know if it's just the circles I, I run in or you know how social media just kind of pigeonholes pigeonholes us into our own little forced echo chambers but i I don't know anyone who when they found out about like the tulsa massacre or the other like freaking race massacres because tulsa wasn't the only one it wasn't even the worst um it's not like it's not like they're ever like, shh, don't tell anybody about this. They're always just like, why didn't I learn about this? You know, <laughs> it was never like they never like, like you know, from any race. They never like whenever they hear about this, they never they just get really sad that they never learned about it because, you know, like I understand. Like we all just learn about like the wars <laughs> and the Great Depression and then. The wars and you know what else? It's like well, I was gonna say French revolutions, like but that was a war. Um, <laughs> I guess they never talk about like just because these wars were happening doesn't mean that all that was happening. You know, like life was still going on. <laughs> you know, like the wives were at home doing something. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> they never really talk about that. They're probably. Who knows? Like, I forgot. Like, you know, like they were definitely like creating like pottery and you know things like that, and you know probably you know creating art, you know, writing, doing some shit, and then you just never learn about that. It's like what were what, like what else was going on in the war? It's like I could sort of figure out pretty much what, like what was happening in a war like that could literally just be like one lesson and it's sort of sad it's like yeah people were fucking killing each other and some things were super interesting you know like mm-hmm. you know like how like certain battles really changed like the course of of the war and you know if that never happened then you know we could have lost and things like things like that um but while wars were being fought you know, the people at home, like, shit was going on. Um, it's not like, you know, like, we, we hear time and time again where, you know, like, Black people were out fighting the war, and then they come home, and then they'd be treated, like, worse than they were <laughs> on the field. So, I don't know. Yeah, long story short, like, we, we watered down history, and it's, it's just really sad. Yeah. yeah, it's like a, two things that um, that were kind of mentioned, like the civil rights, a lot of that stuff gets shoved into February um, for learning, you know, black history. But then also even like in the curriculum, kind of alluding to what Mark was saying, there's only so much time to talk about certain topics uh-huh. in just the public school system. Right. Um, like I learned a lot when I took like high school U.S. I mean, like you learn stuff like earlier, of course, you always see certain things. But like I did learn like a good amount in like high school history. But even then, it's like that. And there's nothing compared, excuse me, to what you know. You kind of just learn now from Instagram often, or like social media, or whatever. You see all these infographics. You can do more research. I'm like I never probably learned any of this in school. Um, like we, there definitely are some pretty good like breakdowns of certain things that happen. But it's just so much, and, and you're learning. I don't even know how we're able to have the capacity to learn as much as we did in school. Cause I'm just like, that is so overwhelming to like learn like these seven, like you have seven different classes, the eight periods we had, one was lunch. So you have like seven different classes and you're trying to learn all of it in the span of like not even a whole year, like nine months or something. Yeah. about Yeah. And so like, yeah, you're trying to like learn all these things for us history, at least it's one country, but it's still, I don't really remember. Like I know that there was some activity and because my class, like, my teacher, a shout out to him, he was pretty creative. So we had like these kind of like, um, I don't know what they were called, conferences, where it's like all these historical leaders come together 
not just leaders, but historical figures come together um, and you basically get one. And I think you can maybe pick ahead of time who you want or it's random. And then like you basically have a big circle <laughs> where we're all in like this. Yeah, you're all in the circle and you kind of get graded based on how you actually how much you talk, how well your points are made. So it's like kind of like a debate, kind of like a conference. Some people who aren't even necessarily alive all at the same time, or at least people who would not have really met in person. So that was pretty cool because we were able to sort of role play. It was basically role playing. We were just role playing as like civil rights leaders and other people. I think some people have role played as imperialists, like Rhodes, whoever the Rhodes guy was who made Rhodesia. I think that was like Zambia and Zimbabwe or Botswana. Um, and I'm like, I don't know if we can really role play as, because <laughs> like none, none of us really agree with what's happening. <laughs> but you have to take on this role and try to justify why you did what you did. Um, but I think like unless you're really creative, like it's hard for like some of these things just get lost. Like, oh, here's this other civil rights leader. Here's this other civil rights leader. How do you actually make it engaging and make it so people really know what's going on and they can like continue to take those lessons? Like I didn't even know certain people were still alive. Um, like who was that guy? BT, no, CT Vivian. Um, mm -hmm. I don't the name, but this like mm -hmm. in command for MLK. I didn't even know who he was. Like, I'm not gonna even lie. I didn't know who he was until he died last year, two years ago, basically in the middle of the Black Lives Matter protests. That was like June 2020. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen this guy before. Um, and then there's like other historical figures like that, like in black history. And it was just like this person. And I'm like, who's this person? Like, maybe that's just my fault, but I don't think I really remember explicitly learning about some of these figures outside of like, the ones you spend so much time on, MLK, Malcolm X. Um, yeah. And, you know, I guess I don't fully know where I was going with that there, except just that a lot of these things are very difficult to, I guess, portrayed with enough time, learned with enough time and impactful enough that you remember who they are and translate them to like the state of today. Because I think that was always the big issue I had was how does this lead to like today? I think in 2015, 16, I was really trying to like make an omission to learn more about like black history. Now, not just history, but like the state of everything today, because I'm like, there's a huge gap that I don't really know what happened after 1960 something. Um, learning about the Panthers was helpful. They're learning about some of what happened in the 70s, mm -hmm. war on drugs. But I feel like there's still a lot of like missing gaps in my knowledge and a lot of people's knowledge with why certain areas, not to say all black areas are slums, but like a lot of those areas, the inner cities, or even a lot of like rural black areas that also don't have enough infrastructure and clean water, why they are the way they are. And so I think like there's a huge gap to be bridged from sort of that time that history didn't stop in the 60s. Um, thankfully, thankfully, thankful to what you sent, L. Um, hopefully that video I can find elsewhere besides Instagram because that would be a great one to share about how people always say get over it. Slavery was a long time ago. Um, but then there's like so much stuff that's happened since 1865. Like that's not, the sure. end. that's not the end of black history in America. The civil rights movement, 1960s was also not the end of history. So mm -hmm. it's like, it doesn't make sense, like, as an intelligent person to say, like, stop complaining about slavery. Yeah, and it's like... Yeah, it's we're even and, close to, like... <clears throat> anyway, yeah, go ahead. I don't, oh, you, sorry for, for cutting off. Um, right, because... I don't know. I don't know if it's just, like, a knee-jerk, like, shut the fuck up kind of response that people get, people say. Um... Where it's just like, oh, slavery was so long ago. It's like, oh, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about, like, right now. <laughs> like, why are they trying to make voting really hard? This has nothing to do with slavery. It's like, oh, it somewhat kind of does. And if you want to get all hotep, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's. Cause it's just still relevant today. I don't, like, I'm assuming, and I think I, I think I may have mentioned this on the stream probably like a million years ago. You know, like, reason why politicians and you know everything tends to like repeat itself. You know, they may like, you know, change it around a bit, but it's you know, 
still kind of coming back like you know like 2000s fashion mm -hmm. is because like you know you go back like everything that they know and that they've learned is from what people have already done before that's really in this country and like that's all that we really have to go by and you know it's like well how how many like decades do we have of i guess incorporating like civil rights and like blackness and black issues into laws like we don't really have too much and what ends up happening is we don't we don't tend to try to do new things mm -hmm. you know we try to just keep going back to like okay this is what has worked so let's just kind of keep in a way doing that like let's just like tweak things just slightly just to make it seem like we're, we're progressing when in actuality we're trying to keep things as they are mm -hmm. but you know like with a fresh look i guess it's like putting lipstick on a pig yep you say yep um, so it's, it's like essentially that you know like for example in florida um in 2018 when uh our governor was elected we also passed for former felons to get their their the right to vote back nice however <laughs> our fuck ass of a governor was like oh they can only do that if they pay their court fees so that's just another that's just putting lipstick on the poll tax so it's like you have to essentially pay to vote of yeah. course and like this is you know like out of the handbook of you know fas fascism and authoritarianism and i know that these words sound extreme and it's because it is this is extreme so i'm just gonna not sugarcoat it for any of you and i'm sure you've heard this before too. It's, it's it's not that they you know it's not like hitler came out and was just like hey i'm fascist we're gonna do some fascist and people were like i ain't that no like of course like it was you know from like speeches and pretty much just like i don't really want to say like brainwashing uh, pro propaganda. It was from propaganda, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. essentially a form of brainwashing. Let's be honest. Yes. Um, and out <laughs> 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 of a governor. Like, yes. He's like the yes. worst. Yes, he is. I, like, I hate that I shared the same first name with that fool, but continue. Yeah. Um. So, like, it's I mean, like, propaganda was essentially brainwashing, and then they have people in the same offices but they they um like in the same like for like the epa for example and i can't remember what the epa stands for but it has something to do with like kind of like climate and energy i want to say sorry let me like environmental protection agency environmental protection agency right so of course, like whoever's in charge of that, that like that off that position is just going to be there. However, it depends on who's in charge and what they're doing. Mm. So it's not like the person who's char in charge. Like if you have a fascist ruler, authoritarian ruler, which is almost the same, they're going to appoint someone to the Environmental Protection Agency to be the head, and then therefore control everything to fit the fascist agenda. So it's not like, okay, I'm going to appoint Jordan as the head of the EPA, but also change it to, we're going to pollute everything agency. No, like that's not what it, that's not what happens. And, you know, it's, it, and it's very, you have to be very like vigilant about you know like who they appoint to like these certain positions and to like what they what they're trying to do mm. because like what what could end up happening is like we could go 20 steps back and people are like well we do have somebody in charge of epa and you know they did something good 10 years ago doesn't that matter it's like oh, does it though like you know a broken clock is right twice a day doesn't mean you hang that clock up <laughs> like that's not the clock you use just because it's right twice a day so i can't quite remember 
Oh yeah. So essentially with like the poll tax or like paying for your court fees, they're not going to call it a poll tax because they know that that's, um, you know, that phrasing is bad. So they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, they're still part of, I can't remember. You know, it's like they're not they're not quite finished with their sentence yet unless like they finish their court fee, unless they pay their court fees. Which honestly makes no sense because I'm at, like that's just essentially saying you're too poor to vote. Mm. And that's that's what the, the poll tax was back in whenever the hell they were doing the poll tax. I don't know. Um yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I was just reading what no, Mark. She is L Congresswoman, I think, talking about MLK. Sheila, mm -hmm. I'm pro candidate. Not a Congress. Oh, Sheila McCormick. Okay. Yeah, I know she she won District 20. Oh, that was today. That was today. Holy shit. Okay, cool. No, um, my friend Omari Hardy was running for that seat too. Um, he was the one who went viral like in 2020 up in Lake Worth. Right. Yeah, Omari Hardy. I've heard that term. Your friend, just casually. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Because I used to, I used to go to like Palm Beach Young Democrat meetings. Mm. Um, I used to work in Palm Beach County, and so it was like a little bit yeah. there. So you got, I got to meet some of like, you know, like the local politicians there, and he was one of them. Nice guy, you know. He, he's a He's a real dude. He's a great, he's a great guy. Mm. He got like, cause of his stance on like the Palestinians and the, and the, and the, um, Israeli conflicts. Yeah, I guess he had like, um, a very, uh, like, uh, what's the, like, uh, I can't remember the, the word. <laughs> Sorry, of the C, like, Con controversial. Sorry, <laughs> like the easiest word. Anyway, he had a very controversial stance on that, and I feel like that lost him a lot of a lot of votes. Mm -hmm. um, especially because wow. we're in a that's a very Jewish area, mm -hmm. and you know that's that's just a very controversial topic. You know for. You know, even liberal left-leaning Jews, and you know, like under understandably so. So I feel like that's probably what caused him to to lose the seat, or lose the lose the um, the the race. Also, I like I feel like he probably just wasn't old school enough because, like, like the woman Jen Perlman who we had on the on the stream who who Ron um interviewed like two years ago like it, it, it's sort of like around that area yeah yeah, a little, yeah it's close ish mm -hmm. so what she was saying how it's like but more so biden blue and not bernie blue mm -hmm. no yeah she she's correct it's like I, it's still like like i live in the most liberal county in the state but it's still very like like old school politician -y, like not the most progressive you know part like there's there's moments where it kind of is you know at times but it's still like you know, it can still be very very old school like we have well it's, i don't think it has anything to do with the county it's more so the state like we still have very um gerrymandered districts like i think like district i saw like district 93 and like how that was looking it just kind of it totally went around my city which was weird <laughs> i was like okay i guess i'm not voting <laughs> um but yeah but I, I think that i think gerrymandering has more to do with like the state and the state le legislature like um state politicians and Things like that, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, that's cool. I didn't know she was the guaranteed annual income pro candidate. I didn't really look her up. 
And yeah, Sheila McCormick is is a black woman. It's kind of cool. Like in our county, we tend to elect a lot of like black people and you know like people of color. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. I know I was um, just <clears throat> putting in little um, links in throughout the chat. So wanted to remind people of a few things that if you scroll up earlier in the chat, I did post a link to the History Britannica link for the early Japanese form of where it stands as of today and from the way things is still is in imperialistic country because we still have an emperor empresses and whatnot uh-huh. mm-hmm. and the current emperor as of right now is still in power as of 2019. Mm-hmm. okay so you got that and then also for anybody else who haven't seen king in the wilderness i posted that link in the description box below so check that out at your leisure as well and you're welcome and and also i'm getting ready to drop a link to the poll tax description that was instituted 1880 1890s era Mm. in in some states even after world war one what i saw they still had it but even then, the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, that's not right. You can't do that. And so they found that as unconstitutional. However, to Elle's point, you know, if the state government can say or make something saying that, well, if you can't pay your court fees or court fines then you can't vote in a sense it still is a poll a poll tax it's just worded differently to the point where it's more so of a civil infraction if anything else like that's on the that's on the same lines of saying that if you get a speeding ticket and if you don't pay your your speeding ticket plus whatever court fees and fines or whatever else you get you can't drive your car you can get your license back until you pay all of that right Right. exactly yeah okay you know how am i supposed to get to work if my job is a 30 minute car ride and i don't live on a bus line or i don't live on a line where public transportation is easily accessible Mm-hmm. where I live, you know, things right. of that sort. And right. so I'll be dropping that link in there as well. And it even is to what Elle was saying as far as um, gerrymandering, gerrymandering is concerned, it is more so of a state issue because I know, Liz, you can vouch for this for us too as well here in Michigan. We just got done doing that and looking at my map, we're pretty screwed you know not to say that we weren't screwed before but we're pretty screwed you know mm-hmm. so it's going to be very weird especially this election year it's going to be very weird very different as far as how things go so i will keep you guys posted on that on my end and like i said the, the map itself just looks very weird very confusing some people say yeah it looks good it looks great it, it's workable some of the people are saying like not really because it almost seems as though that more more counties per se in the state are, are getting a little bit more than others so i'll be looking into that as well i'll be looking into that as well it's just that's a right now it's a whole mess it is a whole mess and and what I mean by that is when we think back to what MLK and the movement he brought with him, what he was trying to accomplish was to make sure that not only 
then everybody had a voice to be heard, but to make sure that those voices were heard, you know, and mm-hmm. even then, you know, he brought in anybody who was on that same journey and was saying like, listen, you don't have to do this by yourself. There's a whole group of us fighting for the same thing. There's no point of you doing a solo battle and it's only like 10 of you when we got like, for number's sake, a thousand people doing the same thing. You know, we're all fighting for the same thing. Let's work together, let's get it done. And the one thing that I found very profound, which in a sad way still happens to this day, is the clip of Chicago, where they went up to Chicago and they went into the more so black neighborhood of Chicago and how it was like run down. And even the apartment building that, you know, they rented out had no heat. And even then just walking outside, just outside the doorsteps and, and really finding similar people of the same background saying like, you know, hey, you know, I have no heat or my building manager is not doing this. You know, I have kids, I have a baby. And the only way to keep the baby warm is to wrap it up, wrap him and her up in a blanket and to make sure they're good. And, you know, and it was like, and he was like, okay, coming up north thing it was gonna be a breeze like no but even then he was like i didn't feel more afraid versus being down south versus being up north because the the look and the people that they gave me it was like pure hatred you know like they didn't want nothing to change that they wanted everything to be the same and and even then yeah Oh yeah, you might want to check it out. You might want to check it out, Liz. It's, it's weird. It's really weird. And so he he was saying that you know the the amount of violence that he saw up north was exactly what it was like straight violence. Like even even the the. The mayor of Chicago wanted him to leave because of the fact that there was so much violence, so much animosity built towards him in the organization where they pretty much wanted to keep everything the same. They wanted to keep everything the status quo. And King's like, well, no, things are not the status quo because you got people living in rundown houses who barely have heat, who barely have the bare necessities to live. You know, Mm -hmm. and even then, you don't give them an opportunity to buy a home in a nicer neighborhood where it has everything they need plus some. And even then, it's like, even if you do have it, you're not going to give it to them. You know, and and it showed when he sent in, you know, two of his black staffers to go into a real estate agency. They said they didn't have anything. He sent two of his white campaign staffers to go into the same real estate agency and they opened up a, a book and they had all kinds of listings and when they reported back he was like no that's not right that's not right at all and even then when he was um brought up to make a, a speech about what the religious leaders drafted up as far as equal housing though he was like basically he said like this like i'm not going to agree to something that clearly it doesn't work it's crap it's, it's very crap it's, it's crappy written it, it doesn't help the Ameri- it doesn't help the black americans at all if, if anything it's more so keeping them in the same area again you know, it, it's just, it doesn't work. He's like, I'm not going to agree to it. Plain and simple, he wasn't going to agree to it. And so it it just shows how even up north, there was still a lot that still needed to be done. And even now, you go into certain places, and I think um, 
somebody in the chat mentioned like sundown towns like oh yeah there's some places up north it's still like that uh -huh. so it's still like that like you still have to be in a you have to you have to either be out of a city at a certain time or else you're going to get harassed by the police officers or by the the citizens themselves or if you do live in that said town you have to be inside of your house at a certain time mm -hmm. or have to be at some kind of work at a certain time i, I remember um oh there was a guy with the church with you know, he was a um, he was a minister of the gospel. He was going through a city here in Michigan, and police officer pulled him over. Of course, he had a nice car and everything. It was very cordial. And the police officer told him, "Like you got to get out of town. Like we don't want your kind in here." He was like, "I'm only passing through. I'm just trying to get home, and I'm following my GPS." And unfortunately, the quickest way for me to get to my home. Is through your town. I'm sorry I have to come through your town to get home. It's like, but that's beside the point. What do you mean my kind is not welcome here? It's like, isn't this America? Isn't this, you know, the 20th century? Like, why are we still having these tactics? Why are these things still going on? The police officer just didn't say anything, it's just told him to get out of town. Like, you don't belong here. It was like, wow, and he posted that on Facebook. And it went around a lot, but again, it, it just goes to show a lot of things, even after the civil rights era, a lot of things really have to change. It, it's yeah. Just still the same. If anything, it's more so hidden in plain sight. That That's about as good as I'm going to call it. It's just hidden in plain sight. And if we're not careful, we might fall victim to the same thing. But at the same time, I know somebody else said this too in the chat, that thankfully we live in an era where we have access to the internet and we can do our own research and show people the front door when it needs, when it needs time to, because uh -huh. folks is getting annoying and so forth. And so we're going to just gracefully usher them out and tell them where they need to go. And hopefully, folks can get on their act right and do a, a better algorithm to their stuff and be like, hey, enough is enough. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. And so, and like I said, you guys, if you guys haven't seen that that uh, that documentary, King in the Wilderness, like I said, it's in the description box down below. I say watch it. It was brought to us by President Manny himself. And so he was like, you know, Give it a watch, yeah. you know, look into it. And so kudos to President Manny. Thank you for that. Yeah, he, yeah. he posted it in our Discord, right? Yeah, yeah. yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, for any of you who aren't on our Discord yet, please join us. So yeah. Can, you yes, know, bother us all throughout the week. We do love to be bothered. Yes. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being, I'm being dead ass serious. <laughs> Oh yeah, I believe that. I, I believe that. I, I think when me and the missus went up to Traverse City, I mean Traverse City was cool. It was just the other weirder, smaller cities up to Traverse City. It was kind of like you got the feeling of I know I don't belong here, so I'm going to you know make my exit relatively quick. But even still, it was just like, but we shouldn't have to feel this way because it's like, you know, 2020, you know, it's like 2019. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? It seems like these, these cats come out the woodwork. Okay. I wanted to say yeah, something about like them off. Look, I must have pissed off somebody. I must have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was thinking, like, because we're getting a lot of, like, random bot messages. Yeah. Um, I think, like, maybe it was, like, someone we probably just, like, blocked and like, oh, here's a bot farm. But, like, does, so does YouTube not have anything? 
I saw it on another, I forgot what I was watching, but there was another YouTube, it was either live or it may not have been live, but there was like a replay. And when I looked at the live chat, I did happen to see one of those, I wish I could remember what video it was I watched because I saw that thing that said dot .ong, I mean, this one wasn't dot .ong, but that one that I saw a few days ago was, and I was like, huh. So it seems like a lot of these bots are just like per view, per like as they're just going on all live, YouTube because I don't know what the point is. It's not like a real link; you can't click it. So it's not exactly. Like, it's not like there's anything useful. Um, right, and I don't say anything else. It's just like here's a link with a space before the period. And then to yeah, not make I it. Don't know what. Maybe they're trying to brainwash us. It's like um, I don't know what the analogy would be, but we read this and then enough times we're under a spell. I don't know what the nefarious plan is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't notice that. Um, I feel like last stream it was like relentless, or maybe the stream before that. But this one wasn't too bad, at least. So that's, that's something. Yeah, I guess relatively, like from the beginning, it's more spaced that one than not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the, I guess the one before was just like it seemed like it was, like I was like counted. It seemed like it was like every fifteen minutes. Mm. This one, it, this one seems to be like way more spaced out. So that's. That's a plus, I guess. Maybe they're maybe we're blocking all of them, but I have a feeling there's an infinite amount. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know what their point is. I don't know, but I know Twitch for the longest time. Oh my gosh, they they had one. It was Hoss. It was H O S S, and then whatever gibberish, and even then, it was a bot. It was a bot farm created by by somebody from Twitch who, or it was created by somebody who used to be on Twitch and they created them for like viewership per se. And so he forgot about it, didn't think of nothing about it, but I guess the bots grew and they just started seeping out everywhere. And then it just came to like a very big issue that Twitch got involved and tried to find and locate a lot of the remaining ones that were still popping up. And they were like, yeah, this was pretty bad. This is pretty bad. So yeah, bot farms are still going to be around. But we do have our link posted to the Discord right there. Bam. If you're on YouTube, that's the link. If you're watching us on Twitch, boom, that's the link there. And for our friends watching us on Twitter, I should post the link. Yeah, I think we should just have it like in our profile, honestly. I think it is. I think it is. I think it is on there. I think I we mean, should be the, the only link in our profile. Uh, no, yeah, it wasn't. You posted the, I think you tweeted it out, but it wasn't in the bio in our Twitter bio. So, yeah, we might yeah. Well. so I think we yep. have our the thing yep. about it is that you have you can only put one link in the actual link section, but then there's also, I think, links that you can just put in the regular bio because people do that all the time, I believe. Um, because you can click on Instagram, you can click on Twitter bios on like Instagram. Um, if you put a link in your Instagram bio, like the physical text, I don't think it shows up as a link. Mm. Um, but Twitter, you can basically put any link you want. And sure, and we can and we can pin the tweet with our with our link to it on Twitter. Yeah. So, that, yeah, at least probably keep it out for like a month or so. True. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If not, I will post it in tonight's episode for our viewing. Yeah. And. So that way, our friends on Twitter, y'all can get invited. Y'all will be invited as well. Just don't be weird. Don't be crazy. That's all I ask. That's all we ask. I'm sorry. That's all we ask. Don't be weird. Don't be crazy. You know, come in, vibe out, do what you got to do. But other than that, don't be weird. Don't be crazy. I mean, I think, like, y'all can be weird. Just don't be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Be be the good yeah. kind of weird, the good yeah, exactly. kind of weird. the good kind of weird, the quirky, <laughs> um, lovable, quirky, pun filled, whatever. Okay, but, so not I, I've 
I've been corrected. You can be you can be weird. Just the the the, the good weird, not the bad weird, the good weird. I also said yeah. I took it personal <laughs> and I took it. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the good weird. We, we take good weird. The bad weird, no, y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta go. But uh, <coughs> excuse me. So after watching the the video or the the documentary, you're welcome, Liz. After watching the the documentary, and especially um, watching a, a lot of the uphill battles he was facing. How do you guys feel about J. Edgar Hoover pretty much painting him as public enemy number one? Honestly, not surprised. Um, I mean, Ronald Reagan, when he was governor of California, he did that with the Black Panthers. Uh, I understand that that happened afterwards, but not not surprised. Like I don't, you know, it just seems like the media and politics have a weird like um, symbiotic relationship. So, um. So like, sorry, I was just reading what Brock was saying. I like, guess it seems like, you know, like yeah. media and politics, so like they know how to, and, and, and they know how to frame somebody badly if, you know, in order to push an agenda if, if need be. And they were just like, oh, we have to make Dr. King, I guess a communist or, you know, whatever bad word that, you know, scared white people essentially. And you know, people who uphold white supremacy. So I guess usually you know, like and I, I've noticed this, um usually like how how should I how should I phrase this? Whenever the status quo is getting um looked at like scrutinized and challenged um those in power which is typically white men try to keep everything as is mm -hmm. um uh and you know like it's, it's like a, i feel like they just have a playbook in order to just sort of flip the switch and just make it like oh what Martin Luther King Jr. is doing is bad. It's, you know, it, it's going to hurt your children. It's going to, like, you know, change the fabric of society. It goes against God. It goes against everything. Like, they, I don't know. They just have, like, they just know whatever kind of words and, and things to society to, to kind of, like, put out there. I guess dog whistles, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm um even though nowadays it just sounds like a full-on blowhorn but you know like they just they just know like the correct terminology and how to phrase certain things just to get like that that needed spin for the media to kind of catch it in order to you know kind of create like this like a I don't know, like a, I don't know, like, I don't know. It's just, it's just like a, almost like a propaganda machine almost mm -hmm. like, so like, you know, they, they try to say things that isn't going to sound like way too crazy um, or like way too racist or, you know, or like way too sexist or way too anything, but they say just enough to like for everyone to sort of know what you know like know how to kind of push the country or push like the the mindset of the country in the direction 
that almost sounds like, oh, we're trying to keep things good, but we're really just trying to uphold white supremacy at the end of the day. Like, who was it? I forgot what, was it Nixon? Nixon's advisor who had like the infamous thing about making marijuana illegal. He was saying like, oh, you know, back in the day we could say nigger, 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 but now we can't. So we have to say, you know, certain things like, I forgot what the terminology was, but like, he was like, we have to say certain things. So, you know, just to kind of, you know, make it so that, you know, we're still arresting black people and hippies. Cause like, that's who they were against. And it's like, and like the famous line was like, did we know that we're lying about the drugs? Of course we did. Mm-hmm. And like, he just, just flat out admitted that. <laughs> and you know, it's like, okay, so we know that marijuana shouldn't be illegal. So like, why is it still like, why the hell are we still doing all this, like all this crap when it should, when it shouldn't even be illegal for, for example. Um, So it's like, they know what words to say. They know how to essentially market to, to the people to advertise to their you know, to like their followers or constituents or what have you. And the unfortunate thing is, this is that a lot of, you know, this isn't just like marketing for the best type of, I don't know, like water bottle or something or like the best glasses or the best cell phone. Like this is marketing that that can really depend your life, your livelihood. It could really... It, it could be the difference between um, getting a job and not. It could be the difference between, um, like, the, you know, like the, the safety of your community and not. It could be like the, it, it's so, but like they're just marketing it in a way to keep things as they should be, to keep, you know, white people living in a certain nice area, black people living in a certain bad area. Um, even in like, like, you know, like headlines for, for newspapers, like somebody just made like the, the comparison, I think it was like the daily mail or something in the UK or like BBC or something where like Desmond Tutu, um, I believe he, he had just passed away or, or something like that. Sorry if I, but like, it was like the headline was something that was just not that great. And then they had a headline for Ghislaine Maxwell, which was like something about like, I don't know, something about like your favorite daughter or something. I got, I got to find the post again to come to compare it, but it's like, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell did absolute atrocities, like absolute, like disgusting atrocities to underage women underage girls. I shouldn't even say women or girls. They were children. They were girls. And she still is getting empathized by the media in some way for some fucking reason when it's like not even necessary at all. Like you don't know her. You might have met her once and she said hello. And you I guess you thought she was the nicest woman on the planet for whatever fucking reason because she was because she knew rich people. I don't I don't fucking know. But like the fact that they like she could still be empathized and still seen as human in the, like in the media while black people are just struggling to just be seen as that um but you know I, I guess that just sort of continues with keeping things as the status quo which is like you know something that we're all too familiar with where you know yeah sorry if i'm going all over the place um but yeah, so like essentially when you said J. Edgar Hoover about making MLK public en- enemy number one, sorry, this is where, uh, yeah, once again, it's not it's not surprising. It's just, you know, it's just essentially, long story short, just creating a boogeyman. You know, you got, you got, to, you got to turn the peaceful protester into a boogeyman of some sort because he's, you see, you know, he's just calling out bullshit essentially and people... It's like we want to change things. Like, well, I don't want to change anything. It's like, no, I think we, like we should change things. Things aren't fair, 
and we're getting sick of it. But it's like, oh, well, this person just wants change and we want to make them into, you know, a bad person because we, A, don't want to lose power and B, we don't want people to know what life could actually be like when things are actually fair. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, like, 37 cents. <laughs> Uh, I think you're. Well, I know my thing is lagging, but I think we're on. Were you muted? I don't. I, I might have been. Ooh. Ooh. I might have been. So, Toby. Yo. Your thoughts as far as J. Edgar Hoover making Martin Luther King public enemy number one? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I've heard something of the sort before. Um, I think I was just, I just never knew that from like the high school sort of basic history that like the government was against him. And that like a lot of Americans were against him. And so like, I was literally just looking up J. Edgar Hoover a little bit more because I don't know if I had learned about him in depth. Um, I actually didn't know that he died like in 1972, like basically while he was still the director of the FBI and he was the founder of it. I just knew he was a big influential figure. I just didn't know that he founded it. Um, so it's unfortunate that that was oh. like kind of how the agency started. I mean, I think he was the director for 37 years, but still like that was like a pretty big legacy. Um, his name is on buildings. Um, I don't know why. Okay. Um, yeah, his name was on buildings and mm -hmm. all these type of things were established but like he did so many shady things and I guess a lot of it came out after his death and like a lot of things had to be declassified. Right. But like, that's obviously not something that should happen. Um, it definitely made me see the FBI in a different light too. Cause you kind of think of them as like, okay, they're these heroes. Right. I mean, I like to watch my shows like criminal minds. A lot of us watch other shows and we kind of see the FBI. They're like, or like even in real life, you hear about the raids. I mean, Ghislaine Maxwell, Ma Maxwell was taken in by the FBI because she had, I think they had been like basically staking out her house and then they found a good time to go in. So it was like, yeah, the FBI, great. They're taking down bad people. But then like they also are abusing their power to go like basically find all types of people who are like non-violently protesting or just like engaged in civil acts like Mm -hmm. It wasn't even all civil disobedience. Some of it they were just doing, they were just doing, like they were just organizing in their own way. Um, not necessarily like, oh yeah. I mean, and of course I'm not at all criticizing the civil disobedience. It was great. It was brilliant. You know, the sit-ins, the bus, the bus rides and everything. But like sometimes it wasn't even that. You were just marching and doing other things. And yet you're still being like categorized as this like number one enemy of the country. Mm -hmm. And it's actually kind of wild. Um, and it shows like what, the government is willing to do and to stop the progress for black people. Part oh, of that yeah. clip you shared, Al, um, it was, I'm trying to remember the comedian, Ryan, somebody. Um, mm -hmm. We've but, all definitely seen him, but go on, sir. I don't remember his name. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, um, that clip, I remember that there was a point where he was saying like, cause he took, he went over a lot of stuff that like government institutionalized slavery, discrimination. And he, at the end was kind of like, and this is only what the government did, right? There's right, something yeah. besides that, because there's government, but then there's also a lot of private institutions. So like redlining and whatnot. So I think like that instance with the FBI making them like public enemy number one was like the culmination of like government intervention and like oppression. Because, of course, you had, like, slavery, you had all that stuff, Jim Crow. But even, like, once these sort of, even after the Civil Rights Act passed, Voting Rights Act, like, you, I feel like the government was still determined that, like, nah, you still need to intervene in some way. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's, yeah, it's, I don't remember when I exactly I learned it, but it definitely was not in school. Um, and so... I think also same thing with like Nixon. I learned like that when I was in, I think it was my senior year of college and it was kind of like this one little off like 
off to the side class I took um, of all things. And I, we learned about the Black Panthers. We learned about like the war on drugs and how like El Rickman said what he said, the advisor to Nixon, and he went to jail. I don't know how long he went to jail, but like that man went to jail. So clearly like this was like admitted. I think even the FBI with MLK, like there was a payout. I still don't know all the details of it. And I've heard that it's kind of mixed because it was almost like a pity payout of like a few hundred dollars that was given to like MLK's estate to basically say that MLK's assassination came about because of certain things that had to do with the FBI. And I'm like, well, dang, okay. We just admitted that, <laughs> like, and there's like a record for that. And then life just continued to go on. Like, does, are, are we gonna speed past that? Like they didn't just admit what they just admitted. Mm. Again, I have to do more research into it because I think it was more, it was less of like a real culpability. Like, I don't think anyone went to jail. Like, no one in the FBI went to jail <laughs> for anything involved. In <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Like, so it was more of like a civil payout than anything, right? I don't think there were criminal charges pressed. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I said, I mean, it might have been a few thousand dollars, but still kind of a pity payout. Um, at least, like, for the people, and I mean, I don't mean to make, like, make it so like say it so frivolously but like at least the people who like were victims of police brutality sometimes got like the tens of or hundreds of millions or however much right like record-breaking sums of these types for like the family of george floyd and the family of other people recently right that's never going to bring back who died but that's a large yeah. amount of money that at least shows that there was some kind of payment being willing to be made but like <laughs> the king family got like hundreds or thousands of dollars no like and from a federal agency that like like it's wrong no matter what happens but like the fact that the fbi which is like one of the most powerful institutions in the country i mean the cia is also like way up there but um they had something to do with this man dying or at the very least like wrongfully kind of like had him i don't know if they really ever admitted to it being wrong but most people know that that's not correct that he was like mm -hmm. number one and there's really no restitution for it it's sad yeah, yeah. Man, that's just kind of my general thoughts, I guess. And even then, you know, to put this man's like private life on mainstream media and what he was doing and, and framing him to be this um, two faced person, like, yeah, he, he's saying one thing but he's doing another and whatnot and it was just like but why what 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 is he really doing other than what is he really doing other than um testing the norm to see if the norms is actually correct that if what the founding fathers said actually was the reality and he basically said that no that we're living below what the founding fathers stated and even if you're looking at the constitution where it said that all men are created equal clearly it's not not all men are created equal and he was going against that and he rallied behind that and and people were like yeah you're right and, you know when you're thinking about it and talking like yeah you're right like not all men are created equal like how is it that we could go into a restaurant but yet so as we go in that the both of us had to be split apart you know we can't even share a meal together we can't even go to the park and drink the same water together. Like we can't do that, you know? And, and to think that it's okay in a time where it's not okay is like, come on, there, there's gotta be a change. And mm -hmm. even now, you know, things are still basically the same way. And it, it just, it hurts to see that we have people in positions of power who want nothing more than to keep the status quo versus 
being the one person to implement change, to be a risk taker, to do something progressive and not just be a stagnant, for lack of better words. You know, do something that's going to get people excited in a positive way, not in a negative way. We, we already seen that happen in a negative way. And folks are still trying to sort that mess out. Not even going to go into that. But even still, it, it's just it's just seeing how, how much of an effect that King had on a national level to the point where they're wiretapping all of his phones and tapping his phone calls and following him and, and saying that he is having a full-blown affair and, and putting it out in the newspapers. It's, it's like, man, like you, you really wanted to take this man out and even when putting and airing out his dirty laundry, that didn't do anything. It, in if our honesty, it actually fueled more flame in his fire to keep on going because clearly he was on the right track. Clearly. Clearly mm -hmm. he was on the right track. Clearly he was ruffling enough feathers to the point where they wanted to take this man out up until, again, they had to take this man out. Like, we can't kill his character. If we can't kill his integrity, if we can't kill anything, then ultimately we're going to have to take him out you know right. and, and it's sad that it had to be done that way and even with the accounts of those same people who are in that same room same area when he was shot and, and just the look on their face it was just like wow even then you know a lot of the people who were in the interviews who were recalling those memories you could tell that they were fighting back emotions. You could tell they were fighting back tears because it was like it happened yesterday. Like they could recall it as if it just happened and kind of just go through those emotions. It was tough. It had to be tough. Mm -hmm. It had to be tough, you know? But but it's still kudos to those men and women who still stuck by them, who mm -hmm. still was like, you know what? Yeah, there were some places where we did drop the ball, but. We picked it back up and here we are. We're, we're marching right along with you. We're trying to see what we can do to help these citizens out because King, he, he wasn't just a regional person. No, this man went everywhere he could go. You know, like location did not matter. He, I think when he went to, oh, what was it? Watch or whatnot. He or yeah, Watts or Compton went Cal when he went to California, you know, during mm -hmm. the uh, during the race riots. You know, he was like, "Listen, I know I'm not from here. I know I don't live here." He's like, "But I flew all the way from my area to come be with you because we're both dealing with the same things. It's just in two separate areas, but we're both dealing with the same things." And I'm just here to encourage you to here to walk next to you, to walk by you and let your voice be heard. And you had people like, you know, okay, you know, cool. You, you flew all this way out here to come see us. Great. Even when he went to Chicago, like the little kids were like, oh, you're really Martin Luther King from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. From Ebenezer Baptist Church. Yeah. Hold on. And in seeing how like teenagers and young adults bring in these little kids who could have been in, in elementary school, just run around in the neighborhood, just come in and, and fill up his apartment room just full of kids. And it's just like, you know, he had that much compassion to be there, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it's just, it amazes me that when you have somebody like that, who's willing to do that, and it, it doesn't matter what the cost might be to them. But just being able to be there is like, you know, I'm all in for it. Let's let's make changes and make it happen. Uh -huh. you know? And and I think what Hoover and crew did 
probably left a nasty stain on the agency as a whole. And that probably might be something that they really can't get away from until who knows when. So that's yeah. my little tangent. And I, got, I did want to briefly mention when how you were saying how you know the FBI tried to you know pretty much like kill his you know his momentum by you know framing him and well not necessarily framing him, but like. Uh, airing out his dirty laundry and everything. Like, like the FBI actually wrote a suicide letter um, for MLK. Just like, you know, essentially like as a as a threat. Um, it's like, oh, we're gonna... But, it, you know, like it's just... It's just absolutely disgusting that they... Like so much money, I assume like the taxpayers' money was put into you know, making this man look bad. Like, you know, if you, if you think about it. And, you know, like, it wasn't even... And, like, it, it's essentially, like... It, it's just it's just really, dis- like, um, depressing to think about because it's pretty much, like, inner fighting. I mean, I guess that's what FBI essentially is. <laughs> like, you know, finding shit within you know, your own country, but, Mm. you know, like, it was essentially just to stop progress for an MLK's um, uh, instance. And also, like, the FBI also, you know, killed Fred Hampton Mm. the same day Jay-Z was born. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) that's that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, like what Barack said, like it really does like make you wonder, like who's really on your side? Van, jo- I, forget, I think I was watching like the Thirteenth Amendment um, documentary by Ava DuVernay. It should still be on Netflix. If not, it's on YouTube. And Van Jones <clears throat> had like said something that was like very like profound. He said, "You cannot go through Black history." And not ha- and not deal with the FBI. You can go through mm-hmm. like white American history and not deal with the FBI at all, but you can't go through Black history and not deal with the FBI. And I was like, that is insane. You know, that's, that's really insane to think about. That you can't. You know, like every single person when it came to like really changing the law especially like for for black for black people it's like you they were risking their life they were risking their lives just to you know just get pretty much just basic civil rights basic equal rights in in some in some capacity oh yeah for sure for sure and like and that's why it you know just it really just saddens me when you know, like they're definitely just slowly taking our right to vote away. And, you know, people who have every means to vote and don't vote, it's just like you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your future children. If you're planning on having children, like you're hurting them so fucking badly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so badly. Oh, my. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, like it's just because I, I don't know. I don't know if, if we mentioned this, on, you know, in the last stream. Like, you know, like they could they could just take away one polling place or just move it around the corner, and that can disenfranchise so many people. Yes, it can d- disenfranchise thousands of people just moving it, and they know that. The people in power know that because they want to stay in power because mm-hmm. they know they, what they can do with that power. And they know what can happen if that power is taken from them. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And even then, you know, 
what ends up happening is those people that are, are in power tend to teach their family members how to stay in power, give them their to give them their playbook. And yeah. so you will have literally generations of the same family members holding the same seats for decades. And the only thing they're really doing is collecting a guaranteed paycheck. Right, they're just keeping the seat warm. Yeah, if you think about it, they're just, they're just collecting a guaranteed paycheck, and and even men, you know, because of the fact that a lot of times those very same seats tend to go run unopposed. You know, it's like it's an easy win, and mm -hmm. when folks come up to challenge the the challenge them. And especially if they know they have a really good shot at taking that seat, they're going to do everything within their power to make the other person look like the worst candidate. But at the same time, if somebody pulls up your voting record and they see you've done jack squat since you've been in the office, they're like, well, why should I keep you here when you're not even doing anything? That's for those folks that's actually doing their research, you know. Right, kudos, exactly, to you all. Exactly. kudos to those folks, you know, mm -hmm. because you're actually aware of what's going on. You know what's going on. You know that whatever representative, whatever senator, whether it's for your in-state senator or House of Representatives or on the national level of House of Representatives or senators, mm -hmm. you know, you can look at that information and, and see what they've been doing what they've been voting for what they've been voting on what kind of bills they've been introduced has it been pro has it been per progressive uh, bills or if anything for that for, for that state doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. and you're able to call them up and say hey why'd you do this why'd you do that you know what oh man see see this one right here. Did, did you guys hear about Eric Adams trying to point his brothers to a two hundred forty thousand dollars? I have not, but I know that's going to um that's I feel a lot so of it. money. It is. It is. I mean, hopefully his brother is qualified. You know, I can understand, but if his brother is not qualified, that that raised some serious concerns. And I'm hoping the folks in NYC, I'm I'm hoping is like, okay, what's really going on? Like, what are you really trying to do? And <laughs> maybe, just maybe, Yang might have been right. You never know. Yeah, and a lot of we'll never know. Yeah, until it comes up and bites you in the butt, and it's like, yeah, he really was right. Like, yeah, maybe a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that, that's an interesting thought, though. I have to look into that, Barack. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. But this is this is like the shit that just sort of that just happens where, and then. We just feel like we're powerless. It's like, oh, is there, like, was there anything that we could have done? I was like, yeah, actually, there there could have been. Like, some people just, it's weird. Like, pe some a lot of people don't do anything, but they think they're doing things. You know, like, um, you know, it's like, well, like, it's a lot of just you know complaining and then not doing. And you know, you see, you see people do that in like a lot of you know different aspects of life <laughs> to be to be quite frank um but yeah it's like okay like we we now have this knowledge um hopefully like it, hopefully more people in new york know know about it and like they could actually like try to do something about it but you know like i as sad as this may sound i just don't i don't know i don't have faith in people as you know anymore as, as sad yeah. as this may sound like i don't know if i'm just becoming like super jaded of course i'm still gonna vote of course i'm still gonna you know try to keep as 
you know, abreast of, of everything as much as I can. Like, you know, I told my mom, I was like, hey, it looks like there might be the special election in your district. Go try to check that out. Quite frankly, I didn't like quite follow up with her. Um, but, you know, I try to share things on Facebook about, you know, like local elections, especially, and just try to let people know. But it's, you know, it's the, it, like, it's the griminess of, of just like what Eric Adams is trying to pull. That's like, it, it's the corruption. Like, you know, that's, that's essentially what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand you're trying to look out for your brother and all that, but I highly doubt he is qualified for the position. Like, I, I don't think so. There, there's a small chance that he could be. I'm not, I'm not totally disregarding it, but. And I feel like there's a massive chance that he's he's not. One of my good friends told me something that has always just rang true and really, really stuck with me. Because I was telling him, like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was like a, a like something like a couple of jobs ago. I was just, like, complaining about, you know, like, the corporate politics of the company and this and that. And he said, there's no difference between corporate politics and, like, politics you know it's all politics it, like there's literally no difference and like the more i think about it, the more i do realize like there's just like you know at at you know shitty companies that we've all worked at before um unfortunately some of you may actually still be in <laughs> companies like this um there's people in charge that don't know what is going on mm. and then they just bullshit their way every single day throughout the comp like throughout every single day Mm -hmm. um they waste a ton of time they push things back they you know complain they you know and it's like and then you know you're just like in a lower position so you just assume like all right this is just what we have to do and you don't really know why you don't know really you know because you're not really questioning because you're just trying to get a paycheck too And then, like, you start to kind of open your eyes and realize, like, this person's, like, no smarter than me. You know, it's like, yeah, they may have a couple of years experience, but, like, what is that experience really? Like, literally all of us are just as qualified (laughs) to be in positions of, you know, in in political positions. Like, Mm -hmm. there really isn't anything that's crazy, that you know there's really there's no like super complicated you know situation it's like oh it might be more complicated than we think it's like no like for example um i remember i i think i was getting into an argument on like my one of my sister's posts on on facebook because it was like somebody commented about like the the kids in cages things and like the separation of like the parent and the kid at at, at the border, mm, mm. and you know like someone who was like pro Trump was like uh, saying some bullshit, and you know the, then like they tried to end the end the argument by saying like well maybe this is just a, maybe this maybe this is just more complicated than we think than we know maybe it's a the situation is more complex than we than we know it's like no. It's not, (laughs) you know, like we all know that children um, uh, face detrimental effects if they're separated by their parent before a certain age. Um, Because like, I think it's like within the first two, three years of a, you know, of a child's brain, it's like, you know, the most, I guess like vulnerable, Yes. you know, like, in in terms of it's just like the most vulnerable in terms like a lot of uh developmental um aspects you know that's like the beginning of language and communication and um like i don't know i guess like intimacy and bonding and and things of that nature and a a whole ass more of other things like i'm not like a pediatric uh, like psychologist or anything at all um but if like if you separate the the parent from the child of course it's going to be detrimental effects for both 
the parent and the child. And it's like, just because, you know, they cross the border, just because they don't speak English, doesn't mean that shit's different. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, that's still a parent and a child. It's like, you don't need to know this parent's SAT scores to, you know, like, you don't need to, you know, like, but it's, it's just like, it's not, it's nothing, it's nothing complicated. It's nothing complex. The way that we keep our, like, our prisons, you know, like, in, in the state that they are, you know, like, just to really just pretty much fuck up everyone mentally and make people feel like the bottom of the barrel of human beings to make them feel like less than human is on purpose. It's not something that's complex. It's not something that's, you know, goes over our head and that we just can't comprehend. Like a lot of things that a lot of things are done on purpose. Mm -hmm. Every almost like pretty much everything is done on purpose to keep things a certain way. And the fact that we're like, there are people who are fighting to keep things just inhumane, to keep things like just absolutely like barbaric and egregious is just, you know, it's just sickening. Because like they're sitting here trying to lie to you to make you feel as if this is such like, this is something that you can't understand when it's like, I don't know. It seems it seems to be pretty easy, and you know I have a fix for that, and we have the money for it. Can I suggest this? You know, it's like no, no. It's we don't have the money. This is a highly complex situation that requires blah blah blah, and like you know years of study by Harvard. You know, like like professors like no, nah, does it though? <laughs> Do we need all this? Why? You know? So it seems like a massive waste of time to make because you just need somebody smart. <laughs> somebody who's like a certified smart person, like with the stamp of smart approval to say to say something. Like yeah, like like when people like when there's, you know, means tested like income, means tested like uh, basic income. And then like studies from the New York Times says oh, these people spent the money on food and clothes and gas. It's like, really? <laughs> you think? It's like, it, it wasn't to buy space in the metaverse? It wasn't like, <laughs> what do you think people right. are spending their money on? <laughs> right. Like, wasn't it, that it, drugs? Wasn't on heroin? Yeah. Like... <laughs> it, it wasn't spent on a, a space trip with Elon Musk, like, no, it, it was for their basic needs for survival. Like, come on, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, let's test this again. I have a feeling that in Phoenix, Arizona, it's gonna be different. <laughs> like, it's like, why the fuck do you keep testing? <laughs> yeah, and you get the same result. It's like, no, they're spending it on what they need, you mm -hmm. know, food, shelter, clothes, transportation. You know, medicine to keep them going and not go, you know, die. Crazy. Yes. <laughs> Just saying. You exactly. know. Like, uh, like, Walter, look at this. Black women spend their money on food. <laughs> so, yes. Black mom, did you know? It's like, what? I thought they were going to spend their money on crack. Like, what the hell do you think? Like it's, it's so annoying. I know. Listen, <laughs> listen. Boom. There you go. Then I, I saw uh what Barack said. That was funny. Mm -hmm. yeah, was said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More than likely. I never More heard than likely. Yeah. Yeah. But then this one here. I thought that I was like that was spot yeah. on. Like yes, like yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly, 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 exactly. Yeah, that is spot on. He became the swamp monster. Yes. Like, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. That man, 
they had people around for years. We're gonna drain the swamp. We're gonna drain the swamp. I'm like, okay, sure, but what swamp you're gonna drain? Because obviously you ain't draining nothing. You probably added more to the swamp than anything else. Mm-hmm. As someone who lives in a swamp, he sure as fuck did. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. Hold on. Boom. This one. Funny basic needs for survival. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're going to get to Mars. <laughs> oh, God. Mars is calling my name. I'm going to yeah. take the $500 and go to Mars. Go to Mars. You know, I'm not going to land on Mars. I'm just going to fly past Mars and say I've been to Mars. Like, okay, you got an up close and personal look of Mars. Great. You probably get a nice plane ticket where, like, a, like with like a window seat where he can put his telescope and get a better look at Mars. What? For yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what can you do? <laughs> Bish. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. It's not. It's not. <laughs> or you know, gather gather up your cord, gather up your Cardano's and you know go to Mars. You know, just saying. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. Oh my goodness, man! It. What time is it? What time we got? We got eleven sixteen. Mm-hmm. Okay, it, it's it's almost time to. To bring this thing on home and gaslighting, yeah. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. For the most part, yes. And so this this deeper dive into the, the civil rights, and especially with the video of the, the documentary of King in the Wild, again, must watch. If you guys have not watched that, like I said. That link is posted in the description box below. Shout out to President Manny for actually showing us or dropping us the clip, the link to the clip documentary in there. So shout out to you, President Manny, wherever you at. Shout out to you. Kudos to you. And I mean, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> it, it does. It does, and, and that's the one thing I, I done and taught my students. You know, common sense gets you pretty far, but as long as you listen and pay attention and be respectful, oh yeah, you go real far in life. You go real far. The moment you stop paying attention and you don't listen, and you stop being respectable, yeah, you're gonna get a short end of the stick and a nice kick in the booty. So. Ah. Yeah, we yeah. Don't get me started on mansion. Don't don't get me started on that fool. Ugh, don't get me started on him. I was gonna say something else, but no, I'll leave that be. So any final um thoughts before we end? Brock has a good comment about the list of stuff um because we always would have random resources but especially if we're gonna have resources pertaining to future streams which is nice it's kind of like a foreshadowing um then it's good to have like a little list and if people oh, yeah. come back to it after the fact they can still sort of get a taste of what we discussed obviously you can rewatch the episodes but it's like it's nice to have other resources because this is a starting point we just talk about whatever um and there's a lot more research to do so um i'm glad for like to see doc because i don't really watch a lot of documentaries and i told myself i was going to start watching more i think 2019 20 that didn't really happen but it's all good so in terms of this topic, um, yes, Vum Anj to you as well. <laughs> as for this topic, any final thoughts? Well, this is all like a prelude to, to next month. I mean, there's so much more going on. <laughs> but 
this has been like it's it's kind of nice because you don't have to just like say oh i'm gonna wait till february and then end february and be like all right no more blackness um and then it's like you can just talk about anything anytime really um and mlk's birthday is obviously next week so or yes. not because his birthday is with the 15th technically is that how i think Either way, the holiday is next week, but I guess his birthday is technically this week. Um, and this topic is kind of timely just because of the context of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of research to be done on the man. But I mean, in general, for civil rights leaders, because you can't really talk, there's way too much to talk about um, in all of them. So. Yes. I actually got a recommend. I got like a recommended video from NBC. Maybe if I have enough time, I'll grab it. Um, when I was watching the documentary, there was literally, oh yeah, I don't even think it's showing. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I guess they need some melanin and then the and then the lives too. Who knows. Who knows? I don't know what time it is. There. I think we're like 14 hours ahead. Yeah. Mm. So, so probably like in the afternoon. It's like the afternoon, I guess. So they're probably yeah. just like chilling. Maybe it's platforms, like nine hours ahead. Platforms are in high 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 performance right now, high peak. Mm hmm Yes. What, what if they're actually like legit trying to no, they wouldn't be talking to us because like sometimes they have like American ass names like Tina Roberts. Yeah. Say the same yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, really, Tina? Come on. <laughs> Tina, Tina Roberts. <laughs> like, Tina, you know better. You should be, your butt should be in the bed. And you over here. Doing something like Da Ong. <laughs> wait, wait, listen, no, Mish, you stay at Twitch. You stay at Twitch. You, you hold it down over at Twitch. <laughs> we better bots. <laughs> no, nah, it, it's just that, uh, YouTube's algorithm hasn't caught up yet, so we, we got to wait on slow Google to, to get up with the program. Ironically. I know, right? I know. It, it just seems like every other platform's kind of, you know, gotten their bot situation handled for the most part, and here we are, infamous. No. Yes, yes. <sighs> Gotta yeah. get that man a shout out. Yes. President Manny. Yes. So final word. Just vote. Ah. Oh yeah, the <laughs> analytics. Behind the scenes would be interesting. Um, so I've never really looked at anything relevant. Oh man. <laughs> Fun, funny enough, I, I do have it popped up on, on another screen. I'm gonna have to do a bigger, a, a deeper dig and, and see what's going on, but for the most part, you know, it's been very, it's been very good for the most part, and yeah, it's been very good. It's been very good. I mean, some folks we got. Average watch time is like 21 minutes. Okay. Almost, almost 22 minutes. So yeah. That's so good. I, I obviously these people who are watching us, they have enough, they they watched us for enough time to go ahead and say, hey, we're gonna create a few bots and, and just try to disrupt as much as possible and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna keep doing it again. Then we're gonna keep watching, see if they're online. So for those people, yes, I'm talking to you, the, the creators of those, of those bots. Thank you because you're helping us out. So thank you for, for watching us. And, and as we say on Twitch, thank you for lurking in the shadows. We appreciate you so much because at least you are helping our numbers out. So kudos to you. <laughs> but yes. any other... Ooh. So we'll we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. I think I think we may have another. Okay, so this is like a, a little 
small clip, Toby? The thing I sent, it was just a recommended video. It's like an hour and a half. So basically it's a, another sort of documentary. Oh. This, one, this one's bigger though, like then just, cause it looks like they talked about the movement, but then there's other journalists involved and they talk more present day. Cause this was a thing. Okay right after George Floyd's death, June 12th. I didn't know about this, but, you know, oh, wow. YouTube okay. to do what YouTube does and recommend stuff based on what you just watched. So um, it wasn't really even recommendations of my home feed. It was literally while I was watching the video, I could see, like, the recommended videos. And when I saw that one, it was, like, the first one. And I was like, okay, this is a million views, 1.2 million. Seems like something that would be very interesting because I haven't seen a lot of firsthand accounts like that, like a lot of those clips. I didn't even really know a lot of the history of like how I'm okay was going to the North and then people there didn't really want him. I knew that there were certain black leaders in the country that thought MLK was giving them a headache, mm -hmm. but I didn't see it so forcefully where the guy was like, he should get the hell out of here. Like the, that pastor in Chicago. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. The point is that like, I would be very interested in seeing whatever is in this clip, especially if they tie it to current day and have some of the organizers behind the scenes have been trying to do stuff um, to like imitate and emulate what was going on back in the civil rights uh, movement. Yes. That kind of shows a little bit of that bridge too. Um, okay. So that's just, that's just kind of the thing that's interesting, not necessarily like we got to watch this for another one, um, but it would be interesting and something to share. For sure. Yeah. Also yeah. definitely share it in the discord too. Yeah. Mm. Share in the Discord. So I just shared it in the chat. So you guys, you know, you know, take a look at that. Go for it. Take a peek. And yeah, go from there. I might just look at it just, just because. You know, I'm gonna be up for a little bit because I actually have a late day tomorrow. So I have to go in as early toward tomorrow. Okay. So nice. I'll get this I'll get this a quick run through. So that'll work. That will work. We hope you guys have had a very great time watching us and kicking in with us. So shout out to Liz, Barack, Mish. Who else who else popped in here every now and then? Mark. Mark, shout yeah. out to you, Mark. And shout everybody lurking. Yes, everybody else that's lurking. Shout out to all the bots. Thank you guys for watching us. It's been <laughs> I, I know I know our, our folks on on Twitter we have not forgot about you guys we have not forgot about you guys it's just the way how things are set up as of right now we can't see your guys's comments but shout out to you if you're watching from us on twitter shout out to you guys as well because you are part of this community as well whether you you are able to <laughs> <laughs> whether you're able to to view the comments or not you know still thank you guys for watching us and and vibing with us and mm -hmm. again come in tune in next time tune in next time tune in next week you know same time same channel same trio and you never know we may bring a special guest but you have to tune in to find out and so with that being said good night and good, night. Have a good one anybody else No, 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 no. We're all good. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the Discord or yes. social media at large. <laughs> yes. yes. There you go. There you go. We'll see you guys in the Discord. Yes. Good night, everybody. Night. Night.